Hello and welcome to another episode of Coach's Commentary. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a roundup of the Asia Cup that concluded recently in Sri Lanka. What an anti-climax it proved out to be. Sri Lanka were rolled over completely by India and uh, quite obviously, Team India has done extraordinarily well to assert the supremacy within the subcontinent. <music> It's their eighth triumph overall, and Sri Lanka has done well too to uh, get to the finals despite having a depleted side. On the face of it, it is a bit of a disappointment as far as the Sri Lankan fans are concerned. Of course, cricket fans are concerned all over the world because they expected a humdinger of a contest given the way Sri Lanka has uh, fought right through the tournament. And of course, they were expected to... Uh, really give India a run for its money. But that does not be with Siraj doing a star turn, picking up four wickets in an over, that being the first time that it was ever done in international cricket. The feisty, charged up bowler did extraordinarily well, and he was making it look all too easy as far as picking up wickets is concerned. He picked up wickets uh, rather quickly, and before uh, most of the fans could get into the ground, the match is already a foregone conclusion. With, However, if you look at the tournament in its entirety, it is a very good tournament given all the challenges that uh, the teams had to overcome and of course the ground staff and also the organizers had to overcome as well. However, Team India will be happy because uh, it's gradually beginning to hit the straps and a lot of uh, puzzles are getting solved along the way. The middle order problems have been somewhat addressed with KL Rahul getting into top nick. Isan Kishan also showing that he can play in the middle order as well with Shubman Gill and Roy Sharma at the top really looking in ominous form along with Virat Kohli at number three. The batting unit looks settled for Team India. However, the bowling unit is something that India needs to be proud about, especially the fast bowling unit. It's a very good unit and Siraj doing extraordinarily well in the final is just uh, an added threat to the batters of the opposition come the World Cup because India already has Bumrah and uh, Shami in its ranks and uh, with Siraj really getting fired up and gaining confidence in the final, it's only going to add more teeth to the attack. As far as the spinners are concerned, the Providence seems to be uh, conveying a message to the selectors and the team management. Aksa Patel is injured on the eve of the final and Washington Sundar has been drafted in. Will this continue for the World Cup as well or will they go for Ashwin? Because there's some murmur uh, in the corridors that Ashwin might still yet figure in the final World Cup squad. But uh, we'll have to wait it out. As far as that particular uh, decision is concerned, India obviously will be delighted. Sri Lanka will be delighted as well, even though they might have been extremely disappointed with the way the final fizzled out for them. But uh, despite having a depleted side, they did extraordinarily well to reach the final and they put up a very spirited display right through the tournament. Bangladesh will be happy to a certain extent because. Uh, they had some kind of a solace when they beat India in the final encounter. And uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, they've got a lot of issues now because uh, the batting can definitely be iffy. It can be a case of uh, either uh, all or nothing because uh, they've uh, picked just about four batters in the squad for the Asia Cup. And uh, if they continue to do so, as far as... Uh, the squad composition is concerned, they could uh, run into a lot of problems, especially if the bowlers don't fire enough for them. They've been depending a lot on their potent pace attack, but once again, that looks to run into problems. Injuries can always crop up, and uh, the ones that are fit, if they don't uh, pick up wickets early on, then I think Pakistan is going to have a lot of issues to address. Because uh, the batting, when it fires, it fires really well. But yet, Pakistan will always uh, have that uh, unpredictability about itself, despite uh, them having uh, tons and tons of talent available in the country to choose from. 
Then if you look at Afghanistan, that side has also won a lot of hearts in the Asia Cup. They played extraordinarily well, uh, given all the limitations that they have. And uh, that is what has made Asia Cup a fantastic tournament. Yes, of course, everybody would agree that um, it could have been a lot better. There could have been a lot more entertainment, a lot more excitement if uh, rain were not to play spoiled sport. But uh, that is how uh, things uh, go sometimes. There's no way anybody can control uh, weather and uh, Mother Nature. But uh, despite all the challenges that Mother Nature threw at the organizers and the ground staff, they've done extraordinarily well to uh, implement and go ahead with this tournament in the manner in which they did. Kudos to the ground staff, especially because they had to work really hard. And uh, even as they were working, they had to really keep overcoming challenges. So that is what made their jobs really tough. And uh, rightly, the ACC has announced a rich cash award for all the people who labored so hard to get the games going. And uh, on that front, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, the office bearers, the ACC as well. And of course, Mohamed Sira showed that apart from all the aggression that he displays on the field, he's also got a tender heart as well when he uh, chose to donate the prize money that he won in the final to the ground staff. That was fantastic of him. And now that the Asia Cup has concluded, all the teams will be planning for the upcoming World Cup. Of course, Team India has a mini series against Australia coming up, and they'll use that particular series to try and see what best they can do to close whatever gaps that are existing at the moment. Of course, uh, they would want to give opportunities to uh, Shreyas Iyer and, uh, of course, Surya Kumar Yadav to see uh, if they can uh, strike some form. Of course, Shreyas Iyer's uh, inclusion in the side will depend on the fitness report that will be provided by the NCA prior to the start of this series. But uh, Surya Kumar Yadav still will be backed by the team management because he's a kind of player who can really turn a match on its head, even if it's a 50-over game. Hence, you'd be given a bit of a long rope for the kind of um, that uh, unique skill sets he brings to the table. Hopefully, he'll strike some form if he gets some opportunities or if he uh, really uh, builds up his confidence by way of runs. And uh, if he also finds some touch and form against Australia, if he gets opportunities, then... Uh, it's a case of India really getting into the World Cup with everything absolutely sorted out. I'm sure that uh, Rahul Dravid and Rohit Sharma would be hoping that uh, they have the rub of the green in the next few weeks. On that note, I'd like to wind up this episode by saying that until I catch up with you next time, be good and stay safe.